Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show you here how to hack a wireless network, um, a secured wireless network. There's a few different types of encryption methods. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to hack a wireless network with the WP encryption. And this can be um, applied to either Windows operating systems or Linux. We're going to actually use both in this. So um, either one you can apply to whichever operating system you're using. But uh, first off, what we want to do is we're going to download a free program which is called VMware Player and what we're um, ultimately going to do is actually create a virtual Linux operating system so go to VMware Player, I provide the URL in the uh, description of this video but the URL is going to be here, it's a free product and you can download it here and once you've downloaded go ahead and install it and so forth, make sure it's operating and from there once you have that done you want to go and download a Linux distro called Backtrack, it's Backtrack 3 and we're gonna get the VMware image so if you go to this location right here I'll go ahead and provide this in the description as well you can download Backtrack Linux right here the VMware image which we'll want just click here to download it'll download to your desktop and so forth just extract it at that point and we can proceed from there once you have both those components downloaded and uh, VMware installed you wanna go ahead and open up your VMware I have a VMware workstation it's pretty much the same thing it's just it's, this one costs money but we're going to open up the uh, VMware player and I already have my Linux distros already uh, loaded and configured so I have my backtrack here but for you you're going to go ahead and either go to home or file new virtual machine and just go ahead and go with the typical installation hit next and install a disk image to ISO that'll be the backtrack ISO that you extracted from the raw file earlier you downloaded so you can just uh, browse and locate the, uh, the download I already have mine there it should look like a backtrack 3 ISO and go and select it then hit next and select Linux, Linux as guest operating system and scroll down from version and select the other Linux uh, 2.6 kernel and proceed by hitting next and name this whatever you want I named mine backtrack 3 but I'm gonna name it something different so it doesn't cause any doesn't overwrite my previous one and just hit next after that leave these settings alone hit next and finish you should be good it should populate in here for you um, it'll probably look like a page similar to this and from here we can proceed in configuring the device now to configure the device, you first want to make sure we have a wireless adapter on our, our system. We, we can, we're able to view wireless networks normally. And um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and show you mine here. Manage network connections. I have my wireless network connection here. It's not, I'm not currently connected to the network. I'm going to go ahead and leave myself unconnected. However, I am connected through a hard line, through an Ethernet cable on a different connection, but that's fine. But the main thing I want to make, make sure is we have a wireless uh, adapter enabled but not connected to a, a network already. So once we've done that, we can go ahead and close out of that. Go back to our VMware here. And we want to edit virtual machine settings. And once you've done that, go to network type. And it should already be, it should default to bridge, I believe. You want to go and make sure this is on NAT. You want to select that and then also go to USB controller and unselect the automatically connect new USB devices. Uh, sometimes this can cause issues with your, your wireless adapter if you have like a USB mouse, keyboard and so forth. Sometimes it's going to overpopulate the USB uh, devices and not allow a connection for your wireless. So we want to go ahead and uh, uncheck that so we can manually add it in here. Also one other good setting to uh, alter is the memory for this virtual machine. Generally it will be a little fairly low um, but to speed things up I, I, I like to temp set mine a little higher. So just don't make sure, make sure you don't go to the maximum. But just go a little bit below the maximum. Also, so if, also if you have a dual or quad core processor, you can uh, select this and uh, select the number of processors you want to use. I made sure mine was on two, and from there you should be good to go. Uh, just click OK and we can proceed from there. Now that we have this uh, virtual uh, desktop or virtual machine configured properly, we can go ahead and power it on. And basically, this will create a virtual environment for a different operating system, the Linux operating system in this case. Um, so it's basically like you're running on it, like you're powering a computer, you're running an operating system, but it's virtual, so it's running in memory rather than your actual hard drive. So anything you're doing here shouldn't affect your actual system, it's all virtual. So we're going to go and let this power up here. Okay, now we have our Backtrack 3 Linux distro loaded, fully loaded here. I right, uh, went ahead and exited out full screen and configured the desktop to be a little bit bigger here. But uh, basically what we want to do here is first off ensure that we do have our wireless adapter connected. Um, we can do that by going to VM, removable devices, and make sure our wireless adapter is shown here. Generally, it'll default to your wired connection if you have it um, enabled. So make sure you don't have that enabled. Make sure it's disconnected if it is connected, and locate your wireless adapter 
and make sure it's connected. Right now, mine's connected, but if it's not, just select connect, and it should uh, connect it for you. Back in uh, here in our Linux distro, we can go ahead and select the terminal, or access the shell terminal, and that'll be the little black button in the bottom left-hand corner, second over. And this is our shell console. And in here, we want to go ahead and type in the airmon hyphen ng and press enter. And what this will do is it'll show our, our adapter name, the interface, which is WLAN0 in my case, and generally that's the default, but you may have a you may have some it listed as something else. But anyways, from this point forward, we want to go ahead and type in it's gonna be arrow dump ng followed by the name of our device, which will be WLAN0 in this case, and hit enter. And this should populate some populate with some available networks here. So we're just gonna give it a moment while it uh, locates networks around us. Okay, now we see it's starting to populate here. Um, it's best to, I, I find it best to give it about 30, se uh, you'll see the lapse time frame right here, but give it about 30 seconds to populate everything, get the uh, beacons and so forth just right. So let this run for a bit. And while this is running, I'll go ahead and uh, explain what everything is here. Uh, BSSID, that would be the, um, the MAC address of the access point, basically the router. Uh, PWR is basically the signal strength, beacons is beacon frames received, more beacons the better the signal quality so we want one with a higher beacon number preferably. And let's see, data would be the number of data frames received, channel here, this is the channel the access point is operating on, um, this here is basically the speed of the access point, Encry ENC would be the encryption method, we're looking for WEP, WEP encryption. Um, over here, this is going to be the name of the network. My network's up at top, the Elites network, and that's WPA2. But we're locating WEP encryptions. So right now, our best option is looking like it's going to be uh, the R House network, the R R H O. So I guess that's R House. And uh, right now, we see it has pretty good, uh, pretty good signal strength. It's 48. Anything above 20, 15, 20 should be. You should have pretty good luck with a lot of beacons too. So we're going to go ahead and uh, stop this. You can press Control C to stop that, and it'll be back to a terminal command you can enter in. And so basically, we're going to single out this network right here. So the R House network, and you notice it is WP encryption, and it has good signal strength and so forth. So we should have some pretty good success with this. Now we want to go ahead and enter in a command that will basically capture packets from the uh, specified device. And um, we're gonna—it's gonna write initial or IVs, which would be initialization vectors to the document we specify. So we go in and type in air o dump, which is a i r o d u m p hyphen n g slash or space hyphen w, which is the right command. And we're gonna name the document passcode in this instance. Space hyphen hyphen b s s i d space, and then the uh, access point address we wanna we wanna capture packets from, which will be the R house. So we're going to go ahead and uh, highlight this and copy it and input it there and paste. And then we also want to go to uh, space hyphen C to specify the channel and the channel is going to be 6 so we can see that CH and it's going to be 6 right here. So go ahead and input 6 right there and then specify the adapter you're working on which is WLAN 0. So you have all the information typed in, just hit enter and you'll see here that it's starting to uh, receive uh, data and it also gives us the uh, lips time frame and so forth. Basically, we want to, our main concern is, is this number right here, the data number. Um, this is the amount of IVs it's received, and we want to get about probably about 20,000 IVs before we proceed. Um, you could probably go with, start at about 10,000, but any number between 10,000 and 70,000 is generally a good number. But we're going to want to let this run until it gets to 20,000. Um, if this is go some networks, it can go fairly fast. It can go a lot faster than this. Some networks, networks can go really slow. Um, if it's going really slow because there's not many ac network activity at the moment, you can do uh, what's called uh, active attack through injection. But I'm not going to go ahead. I'm not going to go over that because um, not everything's supported by that, and um, it's, it could probably just cause some more problems. I'm going to keep this as simple as possible. So if it's going slow for you, you're just going to have to wait it out. But uh, generally, this takes about 20 minutes depending on the network. So we're going to go ahead and let this run until this gets to about 20,000 and then we'll proceed from there.